Hey guys, Mo again, and I'm going to bring you kind of like the pinnacle, my final form of my Earthshatter Slayer. There's still a lot of work to do, quality on jewels, uh, different armor bases, stuff like that. And that doesn't really need a video in and of itself. That I'll just like get better with the gear and stuff as I go, new acts, stuff like that. So right into it. I want to talk about automating war cries and the setup, right? When you automate a war cry, you do not get the buff. What does that mean? That means that you might not get the more multiplier if you have minions or rallying cry. You don't get, uh, what's it called? The extra fizz as a fire with infernal cry but so we don't care about that this is why we trigger infernal cry rallying cry and battle majors cry right we only trigger these two just to get more exerts right that's it that's the only reason why we do it just to get more exerts and i don't want to hear the screaming in the background so i'll try to be quick battle majors cry is really really important it triggers vulnerability get quality and vulnerability it gives you aggravate chance what's that's going to do gives you a bunch of free dps look at this like you know, almost half a mil free bleed TPS. That's pretty goddamn good. All right. So as you're just walking around, we'll go into Underground River, this blighted map. You'll be triggering. And you see that your actual war cries go on cooldown. And you have those six to seven exerter attacks, right? You can seismic kite manually. For me, that's I like to press buttons. So I do two manual casts, intimidating cry, which I think is mandatory if you're not a berserker to manually cast. Just because if you don't manually cast it with second wind attach, or if you have Ben's helmet, it's a little bit different. But if you don't manually cast it with second wind, you're missing a charge and you're just missing a crap ton of free damage. Like, do I want to do double damage every, you know, three attacks for only three seconds? Or do I want to do double damage six times? <laughs> Almost 100% uptime, like, yeah, I'd rather do it this way, right? So, as you see, we war cry. As you attack, you see the number goes down, right? What does that mean? That means we're overexerting five times for uh, overexertion, and we're getting almost 100% more multiplier on overexertion, right? So, very, very, very good. Now, we still get the buff from armor and the buff from move speed. It doesn't really matter uh, for us, but again, I don't mind pressing buttons, and I don't want to use a six sling because I'd rather use mana reservation for determination or pride. I'm using determination because my gear is up to par with armor. Uh, auto exert with the three war cries gives us just about that we do precision with the uh, vital with arrogance and then for me I like using flesh and stone it helps a lot with mapping tanking this and then on demand with boss scene another more multiplier which is well enemies taking more damage which is very 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 good so that's the war cry setup that's auto exertion it's very very important to auto exert at least uh, do a four link setable auto exertion and I think early on unless you're a berserker you can auto exert to and cry but again if you're not a berserker Second win, it's in cry. Just it's a massive damage increase. I, I don't know why a lot of people aren't doing it. Uh, maybe they just don't want to press the button. But hey, you know, we're getting ready for PoE two. We got to press more buttons, guys. Right. So talking about overexertion, automate automating exertion. Right. I want to talk, talk about PoB. It is not correctly showing uh, overexertion damage. I don't know why. If we go to the skill here and we check off auto exertion, there's no uh, more multiplier for auto exertion. There's no increase for even the quality. On a, on a overexertion, I'm sorry. So I, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me. I feel like there's just a problem. So don't think that you see a POB with, uh, even though the gem is supposedly working, don't think that the POB is actually like correct because it's not. As you can see, we uh, war cry those five times. We had those five war cries. We're exerting five different war cries. They are getting exerted with earth shatter, right? So don't think that that's not how it is. That is that is how it is. So like it's a little bit more than 100% more damage, but... That's the actual damage number. Maybe uh, Berserker with double exerts, it's showing properly in a, a POB. I don't know, right? So, real quick, talk about some changes. I have uh, kind of rearranged the tree a little bit. Martial experience I'm going for now because, you know, you got to get at least a little bit of a PDR reduction because if you don't, then, like, you get into a bad pack. It's, it's a pain in the ass to deal with. Everything else is the same. I will talk about the cluster setup. I think the ideal cluster setup is probably Vicious Skewering. And fuel the fight and feed the fury. You look at feed the fury here. It's just more. Uh, oh, I actually got rid of it. But what it does, feed the fury, is that it gives you wild leeching damage and attack speed, which is huge, right? Where a slayer, we always leech, so that's great. And I think mob mentality is mandatory. You can go uh, implicit on chest with uh, some charge, uh, some charge duration over here. That might be able to get enough with uh, keeping your endurance charges up. But please don't rely on enduring cry. To maintain your endurance charges because it's just kind of a pain in the ass like you get into a pack you leap slam hopefully frost blink too and then sometimes i just seen people like oh wow they died well why do you die you know your endurance charges up right so getting some type of endurance charge on kill either on ring 
Like, again, guys, up until level 95, I was using the Slapeable though and Yielding just to maintain Endurance Charge while map and smoothing that process out. You can also get Warning Call, uh, which gives armor. You can get um, Lead by Example, I think it is, gets Perma Onslaught, which would free up the Anoint over here and get a better Anoint. But this Anoint is really, really good. It's a cheap Anoint, especially for Solo Self Found. The Onslaught on Kill is great. The Attack Speed and Damage is great, too. So definitely need a better uh, Medium Cluster Jewel. But again, Feed the Fury, Vicious Skewering. And uh, fuel the fight, right? The fuel the fight mana leech allows me to not go over here and no vitality void. I haven't seen a noticeable uh, decrease in my survivability, so it's like it, it doesn't really matter for me. We get plenty from uh, just uh, brutal fervor over here, so that's great. I talked about gear in my last video. I do want to talk about uh, flask. I normally was doing quicksilver and double armor, but now I'm just going more max res, the chaos res, and uh, cold and fire because that's what's for me a little bit more dangerous so at least while mapping it's just nice that we're mapping around with 85 85 79 and 71 again my gear isn't that great so like this really helps a lot in circumventing that issue which is awesome and that's that just another quick thing to know i did fix my uh, skill gem so i do have uh, frost blink now which is great you know you manually cast uh, blood rage at the start of a map and then we got leaf slam so all we need to do is just Frost Blink, you know, Intimidating Cry, if you want for uh, dangerous, you know, bestiary rares, Essence rares, bosses, stuff like that, and uh, Seismic Cry for some more damage. But generally, you can just walk around and you can let your exerts do everything, do all the work for you. If you feel like you're not exerting this or exploding the spikes enough, you can swap out General's Cry because it has a much lower cooldown with Infernal Cry. But at this point, like in the higher and T17s and T16s, I just rather have the more multiplier damage. And uh, I'm already exerting a lot anyway in Warcry with Intimidating Cry Seismic and the higher, higher tier maps with dangerous uh, rolls. So, like, I'd rather just get the more damage there. And that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, again, please use Frostblink because it will massively increase your survivability. I can't tell you how many people I see only use uh, Leap Slam. They Leap Slam into a pack of uh, Goatmen, just get shotgunned by, uh, like, a, by 100 projectiles and just die immediately. When you could just frost blink, attack immediately, not get caught in a stun animation because like frost blink is just instant. So you instantly get there. If you leap slam to the pack, what's going to happen is like it takes time. Those middle seconds that you are in the air, you could be eating projectiles. The enemies notice you off screen. And as you're leap slamming, you enter their field of view, their peer view. Then you leap slam. All of a sudden you're getting aggro. You're getting hit before you're getting hit before you're hitting them. So that will massively increase your survivability using frost blink and i like to manually cast molten shell you know i, I don't like cast while damage take you take a whole bunch of little hits you got a lower molten shell i'd rather just max out molten shell and deal with it that way right and that's it guys next up i'm gonna work on a chieftain pob again i'm back to work so i don't have all the time in the world i was able to go hard during the weekend but i i don't have time to level a chieftain to like to the 90s and do a full review but i am gonna work on a pob because i think chieftain is actually gonna be uh has a lot of good potential with uh, Fire Convert, right? Doing Tectonic or Volcanic Fissure. So I will release a video in the next uh, day or two about Chieftain. I hope you guys enjoyed Mozo Nagrant Tech here. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. I love answering questions and talking about, you know, PoE and Melee in general and Slams. Have a good one.